Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the North Kesteven series. This is a large Lincolnshire district centred around the town of Sleaford. There's 75 parishes here, so let's take a look at one of them. Welcome back to North Kesteven, everybody, and this week you find me on the outskirts of Lincoln, very close to the edge of the city boundary. Now, we've seen some villages around the city boundary already, which are very, very big. This one's tiny, and it's also very wooded. You can see there's plenty of trees here. And until recently, there wasn't really much to talk about here, save for the old hall and the village hall and a few other bits and bobs. But it's now gained a major landmark, which we will see on this walk around. Welcome to Canic. North Kesteven series is sponsored by Gaines Recycles 01427 617 752. For all your cycling needs, this is your one-stop shop located at 20 Ropery Road, Gainsborough, or online at gainsrecycles.com. There's a link in the description. Gaines Recycles, ask for Trevor Halstead. This video is sponsored by Bassett Law Pro Clean, specialist floor and upholstery cleaners based in Retford, Nottinghamshire. Do you have a commercial space, own a restaurant, hotel or pub, maybe an office block? Bassett Law Pro Clean cover the entire country for commercial work. And they have a special offer. Quote the village idiot when you inquire and get a massive 7.5% off. Need it cleaned by the experts? Contact Bassett Law Pro Clean now. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. The last episode of North Kesteven this year brings us to Canick, a small village right on the southern edge of Lincoln, located on a steep hill that overlooks the Witham Valley. This is only one mile away from the city centre, although you'd struggle to realise that when you walk around it. Canick is so, so quiet. Almost everywhere you look you'll see trees, and some of the woodland here is quite thick too. It doesn't have many landmarks, but the ones it does have are right up there. Canick's name means Canna's Farm or Canna's Place. It's an Anglo-Saxon name, but there was also a significant villa here in the Roman period. The most prominent building here now is Canick Hall. Once the seat of the Sibthorpe family, the current hall was built in 1810. Sibthorpe family members included the botanist John Sibthorpe and several MPs, including one who once famously angered Queen Victoria. Canick Hall would go on to be the home of Arthur Fuldrum, the second Earl of Liverpool. Now, if I'd have been making these videos just a mere decade ago, the hall would be the main focus of this episode, but these days, Canick has something else. On the western side of Canick Hill, off the road to Bracebridge Heath, is the International Bomber Command Centre, with a memorial that rivals any church spire in the local area. Let's go and see it, and see what else Canick has to offer. We start at the eastern end of Canick on the fairly flat Grange Lane. Take it from me, that's not the case further round. Canick is effectively rectangular shape-wise, with a handful of narrow streets in the middle of its box-like outline. Canick Hall can be found on one of the corners of that outer box, where Grange Lane meets the aptly named Hall Drive. 
Tannock Hall was the seat of the Sibthorpe family from the 17th to the 20th century. The present building was erected in 1810. Among their number was the botanist John Sibthorpe, who published Flora Oxoniensis, a flora of Oxfordshire, in 1794. Colonel Sibthorpe was another family member. He was an MP who angered Queen Victoria with his public suspicions of Prince Albert. He even declared that the Prince's Great Exhibition Project would bring the plague to England. His political views were very blunt. The Hall was later the home of Arthur Fuldrum, 2nd Earl of Liverpool. He lived here from 1939 until his death two years later in 1941. Canick Hall was never massive. It did have a garden though, and its modest former parkland is now a golf course. Once past the hall, Canick starts to become more village-like as we head for its secluded main religious building. Okay, so with the hall out of the way, our next landmark is the church, the Church of All Saints. Now, this is squirreled away right in the centre of Canick Village. And I think even if you were just passing by in the car, you probably wouldn't see this. You need to really be walking to appreciate where it is. It's up this drive. So let's go through those gates and check out the church next. All Saints Church would be so easy to miss. It sits practically all on its own up a gravel track off Hall Drive. It's the oldest building in the village with parts that date back as far as the 12th, 13th and 14th centuries. However, it was also a Saxon era foundation before it was significantly improved by the same Norman bishops who built Lincoln Cathedral. The church is built on a Roman tessellated pavement found in 1815 when a vault for the Sibthorpe family was being dug in the vestry. In the churchyard is perhaps the most elaborate war memorial we've ever seen. This type of memorial is called a baldaquin. Its centerpiece is a wrought iron shrine with an ivory crucifix and a gilded wooden figure depicting the resurrection. Back to the road, let's get this job out of the way next. Canic is visited, so mark it off. We've got 58 still to go. Moving on, next we come to a set of gates. These stand at the entrance to a care home called Canic House. It caters for the elderly and those with dementia, and it's been running independently for more than 30 years. It's a very quiet village, is Canic. You don't see much in the way of traffic here. It's all mainly on two roads, Canic Hill, which we'll come to in a bit, and the road where I began. Everything else within the village is really, really peaceful. And of course, being surrounded by trees, you think you're in the middle of nowhere, but you're on the edge of a big city. So now we're gonna go up Montague Road. That's the Dower House you can see on the right here. We're gonna pass that. We're heading up towards the village hall next. So now we're exploring the middle of the village. Most of Canick's older properties were built by the Sibthorpe family. However, there's now an eclectic mix of old and new. Check out this modern house, which is partially underground. Bang in the centre of the village is the phone box, and it's a book exchange, but this has a wonderful arty attraction too. On the back of the box is a mural depicting the village's key features, including the hall, the church, and a tall iron spire. That's for later. For now, we have the village hall, the core of which is a former World War I army hut given to Canick in 1922. It features these ironworks, and this one describes Canick as historic, friendly, peaceful, leafy, tranquil, and panoramic. It was renovated in 1968 and holds many village events, like for example this, the annual Canic Christmas Market. The hall's existence is down to Montague and Coningsby Sibthorpe. The former is remembered by way of the street it stands on. The next street is School Lane. Canic no longer has a school, but it used to. It was built in 1865 to cater for just 34 children. 
Okay, so after walking down School Lane half distance, you come to this junction here where it meets Pelham Lane and Glebe End. And as you can see, if you're in a car, you can only go down there if you are needing access. Otherwise, no vehicles. We're going to obey that, even though we're not in a vehicle, because I'm going to turn right down Pelham Lane and walk along here, take a left turn at the end, and then walk up Cannock Hill, which is not exactly shallow. Wish me luck. So far, we've been walking on relatively flat ground. That's about to change, and these narrow lanes aren't for everyone. At the foot of Pelham Lane, we're back to Hall Drive, where we meet a house called the Old Forge, surrounded by trees. The trees continue as we hit Cannock Hill. This is the B1188, which runs directly into Lincoln City Centre via Pelham Bridge. That was looking downhill. This is uphill, and let me tell you, climbing this is no mean feat. It's much easier in a car. It passes the end of School Lane, which is actually a one-way street. That explains the signs at the other end. As we near the summit, we pass a bus stop. It's served by six buses, but primarily the 31 and 31X between Lincoln and Sleaford. Now, close to that bus stop, there's a pedestrian entrance to our next landmark. Now, Canic got this landmark a few years ago, and you can see it from Pelham Bridge in Lincoln. All the way into Canic, you can see this thing because of its massive, tall structure, which we will go and look at. This is the International Bomber Command Center, a Bomber Command Memorial, if you will. Let's go through this gate and check it out. This is quite something, folks, and I've never, ever been here before. This is the car park of the International Bomber Command Centre, or IBCC for short, Canic's newest major landmark. It's a memorial and an interpretation centre designed to tell the story of RAF Bomber Command during World War II. We've already seen countless World War II airfields around Lincolnshire. Its flat ground made it the perfect place for them to be built. The Visitor's Centre is named after Roy Chadwick, the designer of the Lancaster Bomber, and its grounds have plenty of dambuster silhouettes. Its most notable feature, though, is this tall tower. Known as the Spire, this is officially the tallest war memorial in the country. It stands 31.09 metres or 102 feet tall, because that's the same length as the wingspan of a Lancaster bomber. Around the spire, you'll find iron boards, each displaying the names of Lincolnshire aircrew who lost their lives in the war. The spire has been here since 2015, and it can be seen from Lincoln city centre. Equally, you can also see Lincoln from here too. You get an unparalleled view of the city up here, and it's not often you can say that about a place that's already on a hill. The IBCC's official opening ceremony was held on the 12th of April 2018 as part of the 100th anniversary celebrations of the RAF. Its location at Canic is quite fitting because it's so close to the former Avro aircraft production facility at Bracebridge Heath. It's also within easy reach of RAF Waddington, the airbase which suffered the greatest loss of life of any Bomber Command station. The walkways around the centre are lined with other memorials and great little fact boards. You could spend a long time here. It's just as well then that the IBCC is free to visit and the only thing you have to pay for is parking, a reasonable £3. Well. I'm blown away by this place, people. I have to admit, I've never been here before because it's brand new or newish to me. And it's just so impressive. It's well worth coming to. And it's certainly an asset to both Canic and to the Lincoln area and Lincolnshire in general, to be fair. Right, we are almost around the route. So from the Bomber Command Centre, we're going to walk down its drive to the junction which takes you to Bracebridge Heath. There's a hotel on that corner, and then we're gonna walk across Canick's playing field and back to the beginning.
At the end of the drive that leads to the centre is a big patch of allotments. One last hurrah this year for the fans. Over the way we find a Premier Inn and a beef eater pub called Mill Lodge. It's a popular place this for the Lincoln tourist. Now we've hopped over to the playing field which covers six acres of land between the Lincoln and Heington roads. It features an active tennis club which has two courts that were resurfaced in 2012. The field is also used by a local archery club. To finish with we're making our way up Heington Road towards the street where I parked, Sibthorpe Gardens. It's one of at least four left turns off this fourth and final side of the Canic Rectangle. The whole street is lined with woodland. It's perhaps then no surprise given all the leafy landmarks that Canic is often nicknamed the village in the trees. Okay I'm back to Sibthorpe Gardens where I started and uh, yeah that's taken me about an hour and ten minutes all told. That's only 20 minutes less than what Bracebridge Heath took me. Small place Canic but I did spend a a lot of time at the International Bomber Command Centre and I do recommend that you do too if you ever visit this part of Lincolnshire. And to finish I used the Lincoln Eastern Bypass again, this time a stretch a little further south to the one you saw me on last time. That's it for North Kesteven in 2023 but it will of course continue next year. Join me then as we delve deeper into its villages. Merry Christmas all you North Kesteveners. Thanks for watching this video folks, don't forget to like this episode if you haven't already, it really makes a difference with YouTube. If you're new here, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and give us a share too if you've got friends who'd like it. You can find all the links to my social media accounts below as well as my buy me a coffee page where you can donate to the channel. Also if you've enjoyed this episode, have a look at some more videos in this series. Until next time, I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot, and I'm out.